visiting the sensory system, remember to follow these guidelines. Make sure the person is alert, cooperative, and comfortable. Compare sensations on symmetrical parts of the body. Map any decrease in sensation by systematic testing in that area. Keep the person's eyes closed when indicated. Explain what will happen and exactly how he should respond. And avoid asking leading questions. If the person has abnormal mental status, or if you suspect an intracranial lesion, test cranial nerve 1, the olfactory nerve, by assessing his sense of smell. Again? First, check nostril patency by including one at a time and asking him to sniff. And I'm going to need for you to tell me what you smell. Okay. Okay. Then, with his eyes closed, occlude one nostril and present a familiar non-noxious aromatic substance, such as vanilla, coffee, or mint. Normally, the sense of smell is intact, and the person can identify an odor on each side of the nose. Lemons. I'm going to give you this card. To test cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve, assess visual acuity with a handheld vision screener. Have the person hold the screener at reading distance about 35 centimeters from his eyes and hold an opaque card over one eye. WM00X31. Good. Test each eye separately. Okay. Normally, a person can read without hesitancy or moving the card closer or farther away. WM00X31. Good. Also, perform the confrontation test to assess the peripheral vision in each quadrant of the eye. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wiggle my fingers, and as it comes into your peripheral field, I need for you to tell me that you can see it by seeing now. Okay. Okay? So go ahead and cover your eye for me. Good. Now. 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 Okay, I need for you to look straight for me. I'm going to take a look at your eyes. And use an ophthalmoscope examine the ocular fundus, which should display a normal optic disc, which is innervated by cranial nerve 2, as well as retinal vessels, background, and macula. Check cranial nerves 3, 4, Cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6, the oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens nerves, mediate eye movement, and the oculomotor nerve mediates pupillary constriction. So test these cranial nerves together using three techniques. First, inspect the palpebral fissures, which usually are nearly equal in width. You should see no lid drooping, strabismus, or nystagmus, back and forth eye oscillation. Second, check the pupils, which should appear round, regular, and equal in size, and should display brisk, direct, and consensual light reflexes and a brisk response to accommodation tests. So use your eyes just to follow my finger. Third, assess extraocular movements by leading the person's eyes through the six cardinal positions of gaze. You should note parallel tracking of your finger with both eyes. You also may detect a few beats of normal nystagmus during extreme lateral gaze. If you find any other nystagmus, note its presence in one or both eyes, type of movement, such as pendular or jerk, amplitude, frequency, which may be constant or fade after a few beats, and plane, which may be horizontal, vertical, or rotary. Okay. Mom, would you hold her head for me? Sure. When testing extraocular muscle function in a preschool or school-aged child, have the parent hold her head so that she tracks your movement with her eyes only. I'm going to check cranial nerve 5. To test the motor function of cranial nerve 5, the trigeminal nerve, assess the muscles of mastication. Palpate the temporalis and masseter muscles as the person clenches and relaxes his teeth. The muscles should feel equally strong on both sides. Now test the sensory function of cranial nerve 5. With the person's eyes closed, ask him to say now 
whenever he feels the touch of your cotton wisp. Touch your face. And I need for you to tell me when you can feel me touch your face by seeing now. Okay. Okay, close your eyes for me. Then lightly touch the wisp to his forehead. Now. Cheeks. Now. Now. And chin to assess all three divisions of the nerve. Now. Now. If the person has abnormal facial sensations or movement, test the corneal reflex. While he looks forward, bring a cotton wisp in from the side and lightly touch his cornea. Normally, he will blink both eyes. To test cranial nerve 7, the facial nerve, begin with motor function. Note mobility and facial symmetry as the person smiles. Frown frowns. Show your teeth. Shows his teeth. I need you to raise your eyebrows. Lifts his eyebrows. Closes his eyes tightly against your attempt to open them. And puffs out his cheeks. Then press his cheeks in. The air should escape equally from both sides. Good. Next, test cranial nerve 8, okay, the acoustic nerve by assessing hearing acuity during normal conversation. All right. As you would during an ear examination, also perform the voice test, in which the person should be able to repeat each word after you whisper it. Friday. Friday. Armchair. Armchair. Good. The Weber test, in which he should hear a tuning fork tone equally in both ears. So if you can hear it in both ears or one ear. All right. Both. Good. Now and the Rinna test, in which he should hear a tuning fork longer near the ear by air conduction than through the mastoid process by bone conduction. When you stop hearing it, by seeing now. Okay. Now. Now. Now test the motor function of cranial nerves 9 and 10. First, depress the tongue with a tongue blade and have the person say, ah. The uvula and soft palate should rise in the midline, and the tonsillar pillars should move symmetrically. Then touch the posterior pharyngeal wall with a tongue blade to elicit the gag reflex. Also note that the voice should sound smooth and not strained. Okay, sorry about that. Now we're going to do is check cranial nerve 11, okay? I need to look at your neck and your shoulders, so I'm going to undo your gown. Okay. To assess cranial nerve 11, the spinal accessory nerve, examine the sternomastoid and trapezius muscles. They should be equal in size. Also test for muscle strength in two ways. What I need for you to do now is just look straight ahead for me. And Ask the person to turn his head against your resistance at the side of his chin. Okay. Okay. Good. Then ask him to shrug his shoulders against your resistance. These movements should feel equally strong on both sides. Finally, assess cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. First, inspect the tongue, which should have no wasting or tremors. Then ask the person to protrude his tongue, which should thrust forward in the midline. Could you stick your tongue out, please? We're going to continue your neurological exam, but I'm need for you to light it. To test sensations mediated by the spinothalamic tract, Start with the ability to perceive pain. Using a fractured tongue blade, ask the person to close his eyes and say sharp or dull, depending on the sensation he feels. Then lightly touch the sharp point or dull end of the tongue blade randomly to his body. Let at least two seconds elapse between each stimulus to avoid summation. 
the perception of frequent consecutive stimuli as one strong stimulus. The person should be able to identify each sensation Sharp. correctly. Sharp. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Sharp. Good. Could you open your eyes? If the person's pain sensation is abnormal, test his temperature sensation. Fill one test tube with hot water and one with cold water. Okay. Instruct him to say hot or cold based on which temperature he feels. Then apply the test tubes to his skin randomly. He should be able to identify both sensations correctly. I'm going to check light touch sensation. I'm going to touch your different parts of your body. I need for you to tell to me... To test light touch, touch ask the person to say now when you randomly apply a cotton wisp to his arms. Now. Forearms. Hands. Now. Thighs. Now. And legs. Now. He should report feeling light touch in all now. points that you touched. Now. To test sensation mediated by the posterior column, start by testing the ability to feel vibration using a low pitch tuning fork. After telling the person to indicate when the vibration starts and stops, strike the tuning fork on the heel of your hand and hold its base on a bony surface of his great toe and fingers. He should feel vibration or a buzzing sensation on these distal areas. If not, Assess proximal areas, Start. such as the ankles, patella, and iliac Start. crests, or the wrists and elbows. Next, I'm going to have you tell me when you can feel the vibration. Remember that some older adults normally lose vibration sensation now, in the great toe and ankle. Close your eyes and tell me when it stops. Now. Open your eyes and set up, please. Also, test position sense. To prepare the person, have him watch a few trials as you move his finger or great toe up and down. Then have him close his eyes and tell you which way you moved the digit. Okay. Okay. This is up. And this is down. Okay. Okay. Can you close your eyes for me? Sure. Holding the digit by the sides, vary the order of movement up or down. Normally, a person can detect movement of a few millimeters. Up. Up. Down. Down. Yeah. If he has normal or near-normal sense of touch and position, perform tactile discrimination tests. First, test stereonosis, the ability to recognize objects by feel. With the person's eyes closed, place a familiar object, such as a key or paper clip, in his hand and ask him to identify it. Normally, he will explore it with his fingers and name it correctly. Paper clip. Test a different object in each hand. Hedrick, say your other hand again for me. Next, test graphesthesia, the ability to read a number traced on the skin. With the person's eyes closed, use a blunt instrument to trace a single number or letter on his palm facing him. Ask him to identify it, which he should be able to do accurately. Z. Good. Could you open your eyes? I want to touch you with this paper clip. I need for you to tell me if you feel one point. Then test two point discrimination the ability to detect two simultaneous pricks on the skin. Apply the two points of an opened paper clip lightly to the two. skin in ever shorter distances. Two. Note the distance One. at which the person no longer perceives two One. separate points, normally okay, two eyes, to eight millimeters on the fingertips. Touch parts of your body. I need you to tell me where I just touched. Also okay. test extinction. To do this, ask the person to state how many Arms. sensations he feels and where he feels both them wrists. as you simultaneously touch both, both sides Arms. of his body at the same point. Normally, both he can feel both sensations. I want you to keep your Finally, eyes. test point location. Touch parts of your body. Tell the person to touch the same spot you touch. Okay. Then touch his skin and withdraw the stimulus promptly. He should be able to point to the touched location accurately. Good. You can open your eyes.
your eyes now. Okay, we finished the first part of your neurological exam. After you complete this part of the neurologic examination, decide if the